I've been asked a few times now whether I would draw a Gaboon Viper. So, here we go. Here, isolated and locked down, it's a great time to draw. While everybody else is going nuts and being locked up, I'm enjoying just sitting down, casually drawing. It's great fun. So I'm starting my Kaboon Viper here with pencils, doing it on a grey background. I want the background to be pretty plain so that the snake shows up, but I don't want it to be stark white. So the Gaboon Viper, for those who don't know, is an African snake which can grow up to two inch fangs, which is the longest fangs in the world of any venomous snake and has the second highest venom yield. So that means the amount of venom which is pumped in is really high. The only other snake that can pump more venom into a bite is the King Cobra. So I'm applying a bit of watercolor now, trying to get that sort of nice sort of dry leaf look or dry grass look. See the Gaboon Viper, the coloring is kind of like a combination of dry leaves, dry grass, uh, so the leaf litter that you would see on the forest floor. It is brilliant camouflage. And this guy is an ambush hunter. Most of the time just sits around not doing much, waiting for something to come into its strike range where it can then bite. They are one of the fastest striking snakes in the world. It's very similar to the Aussie Death Adder, except it's a much bigger, thicker, chunkier snake. The Aussie Death Adder is a elapid snake and this is a viper. So what it would be is what we call conversion evolution. They both find that niche in their own country. So I mentioned it's an ambush hunter. But at night time, it can be an active hunter. You can move around and hunt things down. It hunts down fairly good sized prey too because of the size of this animal. It gets a little bit shy of six foot long and it's much bigger and chunkier. It can take things like rabbits. It's even been known to take small monkeys. It takes birds the size of doves. So I'm now just adding some of these amazing patterns. It's, they're almost geometric, the patterns. I'm really amazed in that a lot of snakes which have good camouflage it's very patchy blotchy uneven irregular all over the place the gaboon viper here is very regular it's almost like a geometric pattern and yet this still works great when it comes to camouflage now from all reports it's a very unaggressive snake uh, the only way to get this guy to bite you is to step on it apparently I'm sure if you look around some YouTube videos, you'll see people taking liberties with this snake. And even though it may not have the most toxic venom in the world, the amount that it pumps in could still kill a person. I'm kind of dabbing on the scales here. It's interesting, this snake is probably more about the geometric pattern than it is about the actual scales. And because it's a fairly small drawing, uh, if I was doing a painting, I'd do it bigger. I could probably mark down every single scale. But in this, I'm sort of doing an approximate, just slapping in a few strokes here to give the impression that the scale's there. It's got a couple of little horns on the tip of its nose there. That cute. I think this would have to be one of the most unusual looking snakes I've ever drawn. I'll highlight its horns at the front there. Big flat head pop out its tongue. I'm now going over with a little bit of Indian ink on a paintbrush, sort of defining some of the bits here and there. always like to concentrate on the eye a bit, make sure that looks good. So I'm now going over with a bit of white gouache. I've had a bit of white gouache in some of the watercolour already, but it's just chucking on some highlights. I like to get to a point where I sort of think uh, some bits are not dark enough, some bits are not light enough, so I sort of go almost pure black and pure white over the whole thing just to really lift that. That's where it's more of an illustration than actual realism. Because the illustration will give clarity to a picture, whereas an actual painting, probably more about the effect of light hitting an object you can disguise a lot more and that's why 
Still today, you'll get some natural history books and field guides that have illustrations in, because as I said, an illustration can give a little bit more clarity. Now I'm going over a fine Copic marker. It's just a bit finer, a bit more convenient, just to knock in a few lines here and there. The other difference between illustration and art is that illustration only has to hold together long enough to get it scanned. Whereas a painting, usually you want to make that so it's archival. Notice that's I chuck in a bit of shade here. What a difference that makes. If you're doing a painting of a snake or anything on the ground and it's not working out, before you give up on it, chuck a bit of shade under it and see if that makes it look better. It often does. Gives it a bit of a lift. Gives it a slight 3D feel. And I did that shading through very watery wash. I was using watercolour and so a lot of the background shows through. To complete this drawing it took me about two hours and I have to say that's about it. That's the Gaboon Viper, my illustration of it. My next job is to scan it, pop it up on Redbubble. I might pop a link in the description here if anybody wants a copy of a print of this or any other merchandise check out the link down below. So, in the meantime, stay indoors and draw a lot. That's my advice.